Hey everybody, it's Greg from Rev, and I'm going to do a walkthrough of the 2024 uh, Rev Ion FRC starter bot in this video. So this is our starter bot. Um, you've probably already seen some of our other videos and maybe taken a look at the CAD or documentation, but I'm going to kind of walk you through each step to sh point out some highlights of this video of this robot. So the first thing, starting at the bottom, we elected for this video to put our Max Swerve modules on it. We know that many teams are transitioning to Swerve drives for their robot, and so for the to highlight some of the features, that's what we did here. We also do have some plans because of the way this robot is very made very modular that you're able to just by unbolting these blocks and changing some spacers, you're able to run this on a West Coast drivetrain or with even a few extra modifications on the uh, kit chassis. So the top and the drivetrain are connected and are, are important. There's some geometry interface that matters there, but which exact drivetrain you have it bolted to uh, is not as relevant uh, as it might be here. The next thing to kind of point out on this whole robot is that the intake, shooter, and linkage are all one piece. We did that because we were trying to simplify this whole robot. When you have an intake that deploys out to pick up off the floor and your shooter that's stationary, there's always a situation where you have to hand off the game piece from one to the other. And that handoff can actually be tricky. So when we were looking at the geometry of all of this, we realized that by putting all of this together into a single mechanism, you deploy the whole thing out to intake and you bring it all back. So there's no handoff. This is just directly through. There's actually only four motors on this entire robot above the drivetrain. So it's actually an incredibly simple uh, mechanism as a whole. So let me point out a couple individual unique things. The first part about this whole upper mechanism is its linkage. So it uses a parallel bar linkage powered by a single Neo and a Max Planetary gearbox that's been geared down and a hex shaft running across. So it's powered on both sides. And we're driving this top link. This bottom one is just a follower link to maintain the consistency of angle. So that's a very simple uh, linkage that's just built with just some cut tubes and some of the bearing parts. Our intake uses a combination of compliant wheels and our, our individual grip wheels. Uh, what we found is that the actual type of wheel doesn't make a difference that much, but the spacing of these wheels actually does make a difference. Because the ring is a ring, when it first engages with your intake, it's at the very center, and as it travels in, it goes out and kind of comes back, you need coverage across this entire, entire uh, spacing. One of the things that we did add specifically to this intake is our new, uh, our new flap wheels. When we tried this the first time, we just used compliant wheels. And while the intake worked well, it took a little bit to kind of get into the intake. But when we added the flap wheels, they really helped kind of bring the, the game piece in. So it's just that first little engagement to flap them, kind of pull in. And that made a really large difference in the effectiveness of the intake as a whole. When intaking a game piece, it intakes it all the way up to these wheels, and then it backs it down just a little bit so that we're using the same system to both intake off the floor, but also as the feeder to the shooter itself. Now you'll notice on the top of the shooter, we're using a, a top and bottom uh, roller shooter instead of side wheels. This is more like a traditional style shooter you might see in a game with a ball. And so what that means, though, is that we're not imparting any spin on the ring. We are throwing this like a knuckleball. Now, we found that that works really well from, from up close, which is what the goal of this robot was. But it falls away in accuracy pretty quickly uh, the further away from the goal you get because there's no spin imparted to hold the, the disc level. So this robot is going to be really good at those like front, up close, and center shots. But when you get kind of farther away, uh, you may want to look at a different type of shooter that might be better for your team if your team's objective is to shoot from a, a longer range. So staring more at the shooter, we're using some of our, um, these are our three inch grip wheels. And we're using just a piece of the uh, max spline max tube, which means that these two hex shafts 
are exactly four inches away from each other. And so you don't actually have a very large gap in here, but because the game piece is foam, we didn't feel like this compression uh, mattered too much and it didn't seem to affect it. Now when you do start experimenting with this robot a little bit more and you want to start talking about range or you want to start talking about accuracy, I do think that you know some of the spacing here or the, the wheel selection or the durometer, some of those things might come into play, uh, but for the robot that we built, the really up close and front shooter, it didn't actually seem to matter at all. Um, we are using two Neos on this uh, shooter. One powers the front roller, one powers the top roller, or top and bottom roller, depending on how you want to say it. And for this robot, we are spinning them exactly at the same speed. We do think that that is a place that we can experiment a little bit more with, or you can experiment a little bit more with, because changing these roller speeds might open up some opportunities to shoot from further distances, if you can do a little bit of control, or you can kind of curve the rotation of the disc as it goes out. Um, we didn't uh, mess with that at all. We did um, use this roller, so this in this position, this robot is also able to directly receive from the uh, human feeder station, so you can reverse these rollers and pull down. And uh, at also a, a, on a slower shot, you should be able to hit the amp shot pretty well as well. All of these things work, but they are there's still a lot of optimization that can be done to this robot. So if you elect to build this robot or something like this robot, um, I would expect a lot of time to be spent on some optimization as when building something really, really fast here to get out early part of the season, we don't have time for all of that optimization. So that's pretty much the overview of this robot. You'll be able to check out the CAD files, the code, um, all the other details about it on our website at docs.revrobotics.com. If you have any questions, feel free to email us, support at revrobotics.com, or leave a comment below this video. And we look forward to uh, seeing what you build at the competitions this season. Thanks.